to the second big episode of Kapow, mm. where we discuss comics, cartoons, and collectibles. We've got a bit of everything this week. We do. We'll be looking at Deadpool mm-hmm. Dead, part one, and also A God Somewhere. Yep, and uh, Ray will be joining me later to discuss the new anime series, Guilty Crown. Mm. But before that, something I know is near and dear to your heart. <sighs> yes. Catwoman. Okay, let me just start mm. by saying I love Catwoman. I love everything about her. I love her wit, I love her humour, I love her inner strengths, I love her dress sense. They're, she's on my watch. I mean, there is nothing about Selena Kyle that I don't okay. like. Okay, okay we, I... we'll take that as understood. Yeah, shall okay, we? Good. yeah okay. okay. So, I was a little nervous about mm. how the new reboot with the 52 was going to treat my favourite anti hero. Mm. Catwoman is now a couple of issues in, and I am ready to give my verdict. That sounds really ominous. Yes, it does. Uh, now, with the new 52 Catwoman, when it first came out, written by Judd Winnick and art by Guillaume March, it caused a bit of a furor mm. among fans, mainly to do with a couple of scenes where Catwoman and Batman are getting a little indiscreet, shall we say, on the mm. rooftops. Yeah, so we decided to just let it be for a while, mm. let it find its feet and see the series. So we're actually starting with number six, Welcome to the Hard Way. Yeah, so we start with Catwoman in handcuffs and up to her neck in trouble, awesome. which is exactly how we like yeah. her. Uh, she's stolen a big sack of money from some crooked cops yes. and they would kind of like to have it back. Indeed they would. They actually bring in a meta called Reach. Mm. Reach is a new character. She was introduced in issue number four and she's basically brought in to beat the ever-living out of uh, Catwoman to find out where this money is. And this, this is where I come to the first of my many, many, many gripes many. <laughs> about this comic. The violence in yeah. this is so brutal. It, it just borders on distasteful, really. Yeah. I mean, there is a scene where Selena rips the ear off of Reach with her teeth. Granted, she is in handcuffs, sure. but still. Mm. Big spray of blood and these massive, big, wide, crazy oh, eyes. Oh, the crazy eyes. They, they freak me out as yeah. well. I mean, in that scene, she looked less like Selena Kyle and more like Harley Quinn. Exactly. I'm used to seeing her as this calm, calculating, little bit cheeky sort of character. Absolutely. This now, seemed like a departure from type for it, me. It does, but, I mean, we have to remember this is a reboot. Sure. We've gone back to an earlier Catwoman. She's younger. She's mm. more desperate. She is still just a criminal. Yep. And she doesn't seem very far past all that violence and mm. abuse of her earlier years. And you know what? I am totally okay with that. Angry Selena Kyle, that's awesome. I'm detecting a but about to happen. Yes. Yeah. The way that Winnick and March dealt with this, mm. I think, was just completely off. Okay. Violence aside, the oversexuality of Catwoman herself oh. was just. Oh, it was appalling. See, I'm glad you said something. I thought I might actually be being a pervert. <laughs> what is going on with her outfit? I don't know. I mean, she's always worn a bodysuit. That's, that's... Cat burglar. That's Duriger. She's always done that. Yeah. But this one appears to be made from some sort of shiny latex that, frankly, might as well have been painted on. Yeah, it looks like something you can get off the internet. There's very sake. little left of the imagination and here. And why a cat burglar would wear a suit that seems to reflect light? Not I exactly have stealthy, no is idea. It? Yeah. No. Mm. And this is the other thing. The plot alone was weak and it was patchy. Mm-hmm. There were moments where traditional Catwoman would really shine with yeah. her kind of stealthy and her sneaky and her gymnastics and cat burglary business. Sure. But it was completely glossed over in this. I mean, look, I did enjoy the encounter she has with Batman right after that, though. Yes. Uh, that's probably the only part of this comic that I actually liked. Mm. Cat versus Bat is always an awesome throwdown. Mm. And it finished on a really nice kind of empathetic note. Sure. But... At the end, Selena seemed kind of fragile and maybe even completely broken. Yeah, I mean, at that point though, it was kind of a case of too little, too late Absolutely. for me. Yeah. I, I mean, it really just... And incidentally, if it looks like we haven't touched much on the plot, it's because there wasn't much plot to touch on. None, no. I just, it was so disappointing to see Catwoman, this great character, reduced to just, frankly, a cheesecake male fantasy. It it really was disappointing, because she's always been so much more than that. I mean, it was was like going and seeing the fourth Indiana Jones film at the movies. Mm. Like, just disappointing. Yeah. (sighs) Look, I hesitate to ask at this Mm. point, but rating. Okay. Look, this is so close to being a burn for me, but it's Catwoman. It's not my Catwoman, but it is Catwoman. So I'm willing to make it a berry. That's Mm -hmm. the best I can do. I'm going to keep my eye on the series, but I'm certainly not going to read anymore. 
Burn it! Ugh. No, definitely burn it. This is so disappointing. It's such a misfire. Yeah. I am not going to keep reading this one until they change the team. Yeah. They had such a fantastic opportunity with this reboot, and this is the best they could give us? No. I just, really, it was, it, it burnt, burn, 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 burn. You know, Deadpool, the merc with a mouth, mm. has long been one of my favourite Marvel characters. I mean, ever since I was a kid and I was obsessed with Spider-Man, I always like my superheroes to have a sense of humour. Yeah. And Deadpool always gives me a chuckle. Absolutely. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know Deadpool, mm. explaining his backstory is actually a little bit difficult because yeah. it changes depending on who's writing him. Deadpool himself has gone out and said that he doesn't know where he's from. Mm. Uh, Wade Wilson, his name, may not actually be his name. Yeah, I think the only thing that we can say, apart from the fact that he's insane, Yes. is that um, he is a mutant with an accelerated healing factor that makes Wolverine's healing ability look like a herbal remedy. Yeah. And uh, in Deadpool Dead, part one, uh, written by Daniel Way and penciled by Carlos Barberi, uh, Deadpool is trying, funnily enough, to die. Yeah, after a clone of Deadpool actually gets injected with a serum which shuts down its healing abilities mm. and therefore allows it to die, Deadpool kind of decides maybe he'd like to try that. So he goes out and uh, tries to find this serum. Of course, Deadpool wouldn't be Deadpool if he tried to do this in any kind of straightforward way. No. So instead, he tries to manipulate a number of other Marvel characters into doing it for him. Absolutely. His uh, occasional accomplice Bob from Hydra, uh, the X-Force team, the Kingpin, mm. that's just some of them that kind of get pulled into this chaotic scheme. And um, it does get a little bit chaotic, doesn't it? But that's not out of the ordinary for a Deadpool story. No, but, but look, I have to say, I'm not a huge Deadpool reader. Mm. Uh, so even though there were those recognisable characters in the story, I did feel a little bit out of my depth. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend this for first-time Deadpool oh, readers. Well, look, maybe not, but for those of you in Team Deadpool, I think this is worth a look. Um, the art is a little bit middle of the road, I have to admit, but it does do the job. But the cover art is uh, exceptional. Yeah, look, that was one of the reasons I picked this one up. Yeah. The uh, cover art by Dave Johnson is just fantastic. It's so stark and mm. bold, and I just I really liked it. Uh, but once you get inside the, the comic, it all kind of jumps around like a, I don't know, hyperactive hamster in quality. <laughs> some of the panels are really great and some of them are just so dull they're, they're almost off-putting. Mm. Uh, now you mentioned the humour before. Yes. Uh, did you get a bit of a chuckle out of this one? Not as much as I usually oh. would from a Deadpool story. Mm. I mean there was that one scene where he's having a conversation with Death in one of yes. his trademark hallucinations which yeah. did force a giggle. Um, but his internal dialogue uh, mm could have been a lot funnier and what surprised me was there weren't really any situations where he broke the fourth wall which no. is that's usually where the humor comes from absolutely in a deadpool story. now like i said I'm, i've only read a bit of deadpool mm. but i loved that he, he would break out and talk to the to the reader sometimes making fun of the story yeah. sometimes making fun of his artwork it was an odd thing to miss out yeah. uh, but overall i still did really enjoy this story uh, there was a lot of madness but it's it is the start of a new storyline so i think that's mostly down to setup and i think people are still going to have a lot of fun reading this you know what? I didn't have fun reading this. I mean, even as a Marvel story, hmm. I just found its lack of cohesion. And, and the characters that I did know and love, like Wolverine and Nightcrawler, yeah. they seemed more like cardboard cutouts than a fully fleshed character and an integral part of this story. The cover art I would absolutely frame and hang on my wall, but as for the rest of it, I'm afraid I'm going to bury it. Oh. It just it didn't hold me enough. Unless you're a particular fan of this Mad Mutant, I really wouldn't worry. Oh, look, honestly, I think that's a bit harsh. <laughs> I, I, I think this is definitely a good, solid borrow. It's not the best Deadpool I've ever read, but there's certainly plenty there to enjoy, and I think it's still well worth a read. Fair enough. Okay, this week we are checking out a new anime series. Yep, that's right, Sonia. We're looking at the much-hyped Guilty Crown. Yep. It's by Production IG, who are one of the big players in the anime scene. Uh, they have produced such works as Pat Labor and uh, Ghost in the Shell, the series. series. Uh, they've also worked on Batman Dark Knight and Halo Legends. And I didn't know this, they also worked on uh, the, the animation sequence in Kill Bill Volume 1. Which I loved. I thought yeah, that was so awesome. cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, IG are a forerunner in the digital animation techniques. So some people like to refer to them as a animation lab as opposed to a studio. Yeah, which it's a bit of a sign of the times, you know, the digital age that we're coming into. Yes. Um, I have to admit, I am a bit of a purist, though. I am in awe of what you can do digitally, but yes. there's something about the old techniques, the colouring, it gives it a bit of warmth. 
I completely understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. uh, although I wonder if that's just a product of our time and what Possibly. we were brought up on. Yeah. I can appreciate both kinds of animation. As long as the story is sound, then I'm happy with that. Absolutely. So Guilty Crown is set in 2039, 10 years after a virus has spread through Japan, and it focuses on Shu Uma, who's a boy who's acquired this power called the Power of the Kings. <laughs> and it has, basically, it's an ability to draw a power or a weapon or a tool out of someone. So he then joins a resistance group uh, called the Funeral Parlor or Undertakers yes, yep. and their aim is to restore independence uh, to Japan against an international organization called GHQ. Mm. So whilst this is not exactly the most original <laughs> scenario, it Ew. Does keep me interested. It's plenty of action and it's a puzzle-like storyline. So, but it's reclusive schoolboy gets massive powers, can't get the girl, getting manipulated by forces on all sides, yeah? Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what's at the heart of it. And it's pretty much like every other protagonist in every other anime. <laughs> yes, exactly, and that's exactly how I felt because Shu reminds me of Shinji from Evangelion, yes. only he's less complex and so uh. you feel less compelled to go with him. Yeah. In fact, one of the biggest problems with Shu was his inner monologue. I couldn't understand why he was so self-defeatist, it's woe is me, the situation's so horrible. I found it really hard to sympathise with him on any level. Absolutely, me too. I mean, this yeah. guy's supposed to be a hero and he was just I so know, down right? on himself. He was. It, it was distracting. It and was. It, it was almost like the dialogue had been written outside of the film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now this carries uh, unclassified in Australia, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's an R rating in Japan, yes. So, I mean, that makes sense with the violence and the adult themes. Mm but not with the dialogue, it's just so juvenile. No, I thought so too, and I thought maybe it's the uh, the, the translation, but uh, that wasn't the case either. Shu isn't the only character to suffer from this. There's Inori as well, who's Shu's main love interest, yeah. and she's just so meek and so quiet and speaks on this monotone voice. I feel it, it's really hard to try and follow her as a heroine character. Yeah. Uh, I. I couldn't understand also about what she was wearing. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, she's was... supposed to be a soldier, yeah, and I yet mean, she's. Uh, it, it wasn't practical. It really was. If I was a soldier, I think I'd want something slightly more protective than what uh, Inori is wearing in this. Yeah, totally. But it's not all bad. This thing looks great. Yes. I mean, superb. It looks great in the true sense of the word. The, <laughs> this, the action is superbly orchestrated, and when you're watching it, it's moving at such a pace. You and the orchestra and the the soundtrack kicking behind it. It really invigorates you and wants to lift you out of your seat <laughs> yeah. and if western animation has anything to learn from this it's how sound can be manipulated just in in anime absolutely yeah. i i loved supercell's work supercell's work was great all except that title song Yes. Oh, it's so lame. About I mean, that. it's completely outside of what this series. I mean, this is a, a sci-fi action series, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be. <laughs> yes, you see, what we have is a whole group of established artists on this, and yet they sort of fail to come together and share a single vision. Storyboard by Itsu Tomohiku and Kurokara Horiyuki. Uh, it was also written by Hiroyuki. Uh, right, you, you're should, doing should, really, really well, but honestly, you can check it out on IMDb. I want to credit them properly, I know, but I, I can't know. do it. They're, and they are all awesome artists, but it's... Damn, it, my tongue. <laughs> it's difficult. I will rip it out and throw it away. <laughs> the characters, come on now, the characters are beautiful. They are beautiful. And absolutely. the world is fantastic, but it just seems like they didn't fit together. It was a bit of a showpiece without a, a lot of substance. I just wanted them to simplify mm. across the series. And they've got so much time to sort of drip feed, feed this information to us and I just thought that they were afraid to let us soak in their ideas and I, I don't know, I was also distracted by their obvious fan service yes. which was kind of distasteful. It really was. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ray, because yeah. I honestly found it really unnecessary. Yeah, and, and let's be clear here, it's rather tame by anime standards, Ooh, but yes. as you said, it's it's unnecessary. I mean, fan service can be, you know, thrown in there if it's integrated into the story so that people who aren't aware of it just, I don't know, aren't slapped in the face with it perhaps. Uh, yeah, and but those who are in the know, yep. well, they're going to see it. Yeah, exactly, because, well, you know, they're looking for they're it. They're looking for it. They're going to find it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Guilty Crown, for me, is a bit of a guilty pleasure. It's good, but it's not great. <laughs> I really want to see what happens because of the action and everything else, but there's too many times that I'm gritting my teeth and rolling my eyes. Look, I have to admit that we've only seen six episodes. Absolutely. Uh, so, I have heard that it does get better as it goes on and they invest more in the characters. But, look, I'm going to stick with it, see if that's the case. 
And what about you? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to stay with this. No? It just wasn't original enough. The characters no. weren't interesting enough. I've seen it all before. Come on now. So yeah. I, it's, it just didn't have enough to hold me. I know it will have a fan base because it, it is still yeah. really beautifully done. And it is. again, Supercell's work is amazing for, yeah. for the sound. But for me, I'm afraid it's going to be a berry. I oh, just, no. no, it is. It's just not original enough. I'm sorry. Well, for those of you who do want to check it out, you can see it. It's streaming online. You can get it from various sources. Some sites have more episodes than others, mm -hmm. but you are going to have to be prepared to read subtitles because I couldn't find an English dub version anywhere, but that's all right with me because I prefer to watch it in its original format anyway. Absolutely. So it's a borrow from me. Nice. Thanks, Ray. If you're anything like me, you've probably spent a decent amount of time wondering what it would be like to get superpowers. Whether that's the speed of the Flash, uh, the bamfing of Nightcrawler, or Aquaman's ability to talk to fish. You see, I was with you right up until that last one. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, I have often wondered what it would be like to have the godlike powers of Superman. Sure. Though, you know, mm. Bounding over large buildings, racing locomotives, making people say, is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a guy wearing his underwear on the outside of his trousers? That's the dream. Huh. Look, but uh, this book that we're looking at today, yes. A God Somewhere, does have a look at that premise. Not from the point of view of the guy actually getting the powers, but from the point of view of his friends and family. Mm. Uh, written by John Arcudi and uh, with art by Peter Snabjörg. Really uh, sorry if I <laughs> pronounced that wrong. Twitter us if you know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a God Somewhere is not all about a dream coming true, but it's more about the destruction, the betrayal, the violence, and the ultimate disconnection to humanity. Mm. Now, when an explosion rips apart Eric Forster's apartment, uh, killing at least 40 people, people, he is miraculously unharmed, yep. but he has also gained powers of flight, strength, near invulnerability, not to mention others. Mm. Um, his first act with these powers is to rescue the survivors of the incident, yep. but even then there are dark undertones. Yeah, when you see Eric bursting out of this hospital room, mm. you also see the people around him that are injured by that action. Yeah. He goes through a glass door, so there's shards of glass, there's mm. metal, there's debris, and you actually get to see the people who are injured by that. It kind of sets the tone for the destruction that follows Eric throughout the rest of this book. Yeah, and that's really what this story is about, mm. the impact of a world once somebody gains these sort of abilities, as that person realises slowly that they don't have to have any kind of accountability anymore. No. A person who, for all intents and purposes, is a god. Yeah, and there are some religious overtones to this. Mm. Uh, Eric himself is a church goer, yep. and even though not at the start he may not think of himself as a god, mm. I think he thinks more like he's a prophet or a messenger. Mm. Unfortunately, a lot of other people start believing it too. So mm. there's all these crazy Eric Forster cults popping up all over the place. Yeah, it is interesting to see how people react to mm. this godlike being just dropped amongst them. Eric's best friend Sam, it's interesting to see how at first he really enjoys the perks of being God's best friend, <laughs> but that all changes, of course, when Eric steps over the line yeah. and actually becomes the most wanted man on the planet. And this is where this book really starts turning on you. Mm. Eric goes from being a saviour to an absolute monster. Mm. He goes on this rampage that kills over 300 people. Yeah, and it's really hard to say what this book is about, yeah. <laughs> I think. You know, when it gets to that point, I mean, is it about... Uh, humanity? Is it about religion? Is it about empathy? Yeah. And I think its strength is that it, it makes you ask those questions. It Absolutely. makes you look at it in that way. Yeah, it really does make you question and it's mm. certainly not going to give you the answers very easily. No. This is such a beautifully, finely crafted book and the artwork in it is just superb. Oh yeah, the artwork is fantastic. I mean, even in those moments of extreme violence. Of which there are many yeah, in yeah, this there's book. a lot of them. Uh, even in those moments when just bodies are flying apart, the, the colours that are used, the yeah. depth of field, the shading, it it all helps to tell the story. Absolutely. It's such an amazing story. If I've got anything bad to say about this, it's that some of the flashback panels mm. I found a little bit distracting after a while. Really? I, th I thought they re gave really important insights into the characters. No, they did to begin with. I, I think it was important to see that Eric did have a propensity for violence mm. as a teenager, but yeah. after a while I just found that they were pulling me away from the action too much. Uh, I don't know. I, I think if you're going to be showing the world, showing these lives being torn apart, you, you've got to show where they came from for it to have the right amount of impact. And I do see where you're coming from, hmm. but 
All the flashbacks were about Eric and Sam and his family. I mean, he affected so many other people. Hmm. Maybe if there were a few of the random victims' uh, backstories, maybe hmm. that would have helped it go along for me. Uh, it's a fair point, but I think we can both agree this is an important book. Absolutely. It really is an important story that everybody should read. Hmm. You will find occasionally you need to put it down and walk away and take hmm. a break from it, but you will always go back and finish it. It kind of puts me in mind of books like Pride of Baghdad, mm. which takes a massive world event and then just changes it and gives you a different standpoint. Yeah, I, I think it is one of those that people will probably need to walk away from yeah. occasionally. There was one particular point, you probably know the bit that I'm talking about, yeah. it's a very graphic moment where I did have to put the book down and walk away, but minutes later I was coming back, I had to plough straight through to the end. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a book, A God Somewhere, is something that should be on everybody's mm. shelf. You will read it either once a month or you'll just read it once and never read it again like I might. Yeah. But you will read it. This is a definite buy for me. Mm -hmm. Buy it, lend it to your friends, talk about this book. I am giving it a buy twice. Uh -huh. First time for that. That way you can have a copy of your own and you can lend it to friends without worry about it. You know, whether smart. you never get it back. That way you do have somebody to talk to about it because you will want to. So. Do yourself a favour, read this book. Yeah, just have something really happy to do afterwards. Like, yeah. you know, pat kittens or... or go watch Aladdin, watch Aladdin or something. Or something yeah. Give someone a hug. Yeah. Hmm. That was really quick. Yes, it was. But don't worry, we'll be back again next week, won't we? Absolutely. We'll be looking at Fatal. And, of course, The Secret Life of D.B. Cooper. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to keep following us and liking us on the good old interwebs, guys. And you could go into the running, as we've told you, to get this fantastic Batman play arts yes. figure. Uh -huh. So get into that. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.